Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Winning Corner. We're here looking at Diablo. That's right. The Diablo, well, universe, obviously, quite obviously. He's from the Diablo universe. He's a Mivi warrior. He's a ton of fun. He's also available in the Founders Pack for any of you that have bought that. Welcome, of course, to everyone. Thanks for checking this out. Thanks for watching. Uh, big shout out to all my subscribers. Before we get into this, we're going to be doing a giveaway, guys, uh, for... $20 in Battle.net currency. Now, I haven't figured out the details yet, but as long as you're a subscriber, you're eligible. That's all you have to do is hit that subscribe button, you're eligible. Probably this weekend is when that's gonna happen. Don't have a set date, because we did hit a big 200. We have 200 subscribers, so welcome to all you guys. Thanks for for being along for the ride. And uh, so, a little way to give back to everybody. You know, one one lucky person, rather, not everybody. One, one lucky guy out there. And, uh, you know, it'll buy you some nice some skins or a hero, or you could use it in another game, too, if you don't play heroes. But if you want to buy in, you want to buy the Founders Pack, that's like halfway there. So uh, look for that, that to go out this weekend. Just have to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already to be eligible. And we'll be doing more of those in the future as we, uh, you know, kind of build up the subscriber base. Going to keep doing those along the way as we hit milestones, okay? So let's get into this, into this little guide here for Diablo. He is... He's fun. I, I'm not going to say he's not fun. He, I love playing him. He's a little bit underpowered right now. Uh, you don't see him a lot in competitive play, but he's got a really cool kit that you can do some fun things with. You can have some fun with him, no doubt, especially in solo queue. Um, I do think he needs a little bit of a rework, and we're probably going to see one relatively soon, especially on some of his abilities. Kneel before the Lord of Terror, he says. Okay, so... Let's talk about him more so and what how he is now. And then if he gets reworked, you know, we'll come back to him later. First off, you have to realize this guy, let's do a little taunt here. He uh, has the most hit points in the game, right? The top health pool, 6,000 hit points, right? With an Asmodan and, of course, the Stitches. That's level 20, obviously. Uh, bring up the spreadsheet here. Now, his regen is also the highest in the game. And the thing is, his trait, which we're going to talk about in a minute, adds to this. So, he is... By far, you know, in most cases, going to have the most hit points and the most health, most health regen, as long as you're even levels with every the other team, you'll have the most with this guy. That's really cool. So he is the tank's tank in a sense. Um, his damage isn't too bad to start. It's 49 per attack. He attacks slow at 0.91 attacks per second. So he's a little slow. He's like a thrall speed, but he doesn't have any special like damage abilities like a thrall really does. Uh, and he's got a wonky kit we're going to talk about here. So, and it scales off too. He's not like a ton of damage. He's not the same damage as a Stitches. Even though he has as many or more hit points, he's not going to be, uh, on, you know, dishing out quite as much damage. And that's a little bit of a drawback to playing with him. Um, so, we know we'll talk about, let's talk about that trait first off. Okay. Black Soul Stone. You gain 10 souls per hero killed or one per minion. For each soul, you get five maximum health. And you have, if you have 100 souls upon dying, you resurrect within 5 seconds and lose those 100 souls. Okay, now the maximum right now is 100 souls. So you can earn up to 100 souls if you have 100 and you die. It's an in instant 5 second res timer, which is pretty useful. That's like the old uh, Resurgence of the Storm, which is rip. You know, no longer, no longer in the beta, boys. So he's got his own form of Resurgence. In a sense, and that's kind of cool. Unfortunately, we haven't seen him used as much in comps. Um, despite this, you know, you think he's the only one with resurgence, you'd see him pretty often, right? But uh, he's a little bit hard. His CC is a little bit hard to use, and that's that's the big problem as we get into his abilities. But keep this in mind: for each hero and for each minion, you're getting these souls, ten or one, and each of those souls gives you five maximum health. So that's fifty more health on maximum for a hero kill, which would obviously take me right here now over 2,000 hit points at level 1 if I got a hero kill, you know, or 10 minion kills. There's 7 minions in a wave. 7 times 5 is 35 health. Every 30 seconds, you're getting an extra 35 health that nobody else is getting. Uh, so that's going to put you ahead of the stitches as far as hit points. It's just, you know, you do have hit points, and that's... You're a tank, right? You're the tank's tank. Um, but now, as we talk about... Let's talk about Shadow Charge. This is his first ability. It's the Q. It is a charge. It's so you leap in. It says charge, right? You charge in. Uh, kind of headbutting people. It's a mana cost of 50 with a cooldown of 10 seconds. They are all a mana cost of 50. Really cool here. Both the Q, W, and E all cost 50. The, the cooldowns are short, longer and shorter. 
10 seconds, 12, 6, sorry, and 12 on the E. So 10, 6, and 12. But the mana costs are the same. It makes it a little easier to remember. This, of course, by the way, guys, is the Kaijo Diablo skin off of, uh, I believe, based off the movie Pacific Rim. Obviously, so you've got the uh, little, so his helmet here. Is, he's got like a special helmet, pretty much, with some extra spikes and things. We'll show off his base default skin in game because I do not own any. I don't have the master skin or anything like that right now. But uh, this is uh, like five dollars. There's another one. There's the Mercablo skin where he looks kind of like he's got like a murky head, and that, a murloc head, I guess, is what you call it. And then the master skin is pretty cool looking too. Um, check those out. They're all available in the shop. And uh, he comes with one, I believe. I'm not sure if it's this one or the Mercablo skin in the Founders Pack. He actually comes with one of the skins. So if we toggle the minions on here, we want to show off the Shadow Charge. As I said, it's a charge. It's a targeted ability. So it's not a skill shot. You just have to be in range. And you can use it on minions or heroes. And what you do is you charge them. So if I go on Arthas, I... Okay, I thought I knocked him out of him. <laughs> I thought he went flying down here because I lost vision on him. That was crazy. So you knock them back. You deal 54 damage here at level 1. And you stun them for 0.5 seconds. If they hit an unpathable location, like the Arthas just hit a wall, then they're stunned for a full second. So it's really, you know, it's a skill shot in the sense that you want to knock them into unpathable terrain to increase the stun amount. You double the stun length if you do that. Otherwise, it's a very short half a second stun. And you can see how this might be troublesome. If you're using this, and you, you might, you can very easily knock somebody away and save them. They could be close to death, you come in, you shadow charge, and then all of a sudden they're knocked away from everybody else and they can run away. Uh, so you have to be very careful using that, and it, I, it's really ideal if you can get behind somebody and knock them back into your line. That's a lot better usually than, than shadow charging in, in this direction, like going this way and shadow charging. I kind of knock him away from my team in that sense, so, so it's really tricky to really use his CC well, unfortunately. Uh, and that's the, the drawback right there. So it's, it's a base of 54 damage. This scales up 206 at level 20. So it's not terrible. Uh, it's like a good strong auto attack. A little bit more than an auto attack. Uh, and then you've got his W, which has to be the wonkiest ability, I think. We'll show it off first and then talk about it. So if I come in here and I hit W, it's just like the Diablo 2 Diablo, right? The fire waves. They do damage. You go in all directions, 48 damage each. It's a good chunk of damage if you can hit them all, right? And you can see they're all going up, right? So if I go, how many is that? Three, was that 10? I believe that's 10, yeah, 10 fire waves. So it's 48 damage base. Mm, it just went up actually, so it's uh, it's 39 base, nine per level, 210. So it's about the same as a shadow charge with one of those things. And if you can get in the middle of a group, like this is pretty good, oh, well, let's knock him out of the way and then W, and we'll do the damage to all of these guys. It's not terrible. It, it's a little bit low on the damage end, but then you can do. Well, I was going to show the E off, but Arthas died. Um, so it's kind. It's you know, it's a little bit hard to use that and to get a lot of damage out of it. You also have to be careful if you use that in areas because it's such a large radius. It can give you away. Those will travel through terrain. You can see that on the map they were traveling all the way up into here. They would come down through these walls. They'd go through the gate. They are not stopped by terrain, so. You can give your position away if you don't if you're not careful when you use those. You have to be very careful about it. E is his other form of CC. It's uh, the longest cooldown at 12 seconds. You grab the target. It's kind of like a wrestling move. You grab them and you slam them behind your character model. And if we actually we'll reset the level here and run out, you're gonna see it's a base of 46. So the base here it's 54, 39, and then 46, and it stuns for a quarter of a second. A very brief stun. Um, so if I were to come in here and say and pick Arthas up, that's what it looks like, and then I could knock him back. If I had knocked him into a wall, it would have been a full minute and a quarter on, I mean, a, a minute and a quarter, uh, one and a quarter seconds on the stun, which isn't a lot, honestly. That's like just barely longer than an Uther stun, uh, and I think that might be part of the problem. It is pretty cool in that you can pick them up and then knock them back like that. You can actually pick people up over the wall if you're inside this gate. A really cool thing. Uh, I would love to show off right now. I'm going to have to let Arthas push the wave probably. But you would stand in here and you can actually, you can see there's a little bit of a range to it. It's melee range, but it's, but it's probably like 1.5 on the range. You come in, you can actually pick somebody up here and then dunk them over the wall and then they're trapped. Kind of like gorging somebody with the stitches and running through your gate. Very similar effect. And of course, remember you can shadow charge them after 
you've knocked them. It's a little hard to shadow charge first and then overpower because when you shadow charge, you knock them away. So it's a little bit harder to do the Q than the E. It's more ideal to be able to do the E and then the Q. But that's why like, if you're playing against Diablo, make sure you don't get too close because I've had it happen to me. You actually, you can pull you over this while the gate's up and then you're, you know, you're dead. Rip. So that's his basic, basic kit, two forms of CC, uh, and then the W, the fireways, which is like an AOE ability. And you can see I'm earning skulls right now, or souls, not skulls. I've got eight times five, that's 40 extra health, just base, 40 maximum health. Pretty cool. Um, and so he's got two heroics. One is probably more use useful than the other one. So we can talk about that a little bit. Let's go ahead and level up to 10. If we go in here, I'll try and show this off. There's the uh, the dunk right there. And now I mean, he's Arthas, so he takes a while to kill, but he's not going to run away. There's nowhere to go. Uh, so that's what that looks like if you were to dunk them over the wall. Pretty cool. It's a lot of fun. It's one of the most fun things to do as Diablo, honestly. All right, so we'll talk about the build, show off the heroic, uh, both heroics too, on the way. Uh, level one, he's got a few good choices. But by and large, the go-to here is Soul Feast. For each soul gain, you get an additional five health. So it doubles the health and you get 0.1 health regen per second. So right now I have 27 times five. If I take this, it'll be 27 times 10 and I'll get the 0.1 health regen per second. So that would be like 2.7 more health regen per second. I'm about a quarter of the way up my maximum soul count of 100. So you can see if I had 100 souls, I'd have an extra 10 health regen, and I'd have an extra 500 health. That's, you know, at level 20, that's 6,500. Pretty cool. And Arthas is about to get dunked over the wall again. Um, so that's usually the goal, the go-to, Soul Feast. Now, I'm sure you've, you'll sometimes see other ones, like maybe somebody can make a case for block. Uh, this, the steal here is you actually get souls from using overpower, which is kind of cool. You get five more souls, but I just don't think it's worth taking over soul feast. And the other one that you might take occasionally is devil's do. And what this does is it reduces the resurrection cost from 100 to 60. And that means you get a few more lives, um, per game. But still, I just, it's so hard to give up soul feast that I almost never take this. Maybe in a certain comp where you're dying a lot and you don't need... I don't know. Like they're really bursty or something. I don't know. I'm trying to think of a good case where you take Devil's Do. I almost always take Soul Feast. So that's my recommendation is go with that on level one. Level four, really because of his tankiness and taking that on level one and this whole trait with the Soul Stone, you're going to want to take Amplified Healing because if you look at this, my health regen right now is 10.12, okay? If I take Amplified Healing, it is now 13.16. I got an extra three health regen per second. Uh, pretty cool, and as I earn souls, that health regen goes up even more because of my level 1 talent. These go really nicely together. Uh, and of course, if you're getting healed, if the mouth is going to heal me, that's even better. I'm getting benefit out of that. I get a benefit from my fountain. I get a benefit from the, the regen globes. So it's, it's hard to argue anything else besides those two choices. They just go so well together, and they work well with his trait that I would recommend them in pretty much any game. Um, this extends the, the range of w, his W. Here it does more damage to non-heroic enemies. This would have been useful like with the Asmodan Abathur push comps we used to see, or like promote comps. This would have been a very useful trait to take in those niche situations. You don't really see a lot of those anymore. Um, so I don't really recommend this. But if you did run into a five specialist comp with a running Asmodan, Abathur, and Zagara, and Gazlo, and you need to clear waves more than you need a team fight presence, by all means, go, go Molten Impact. Uh, demonic Strength adds more damage to the E, to the Overpower. But, so as I said, it's just hard. You know, don't give up. This This is just so good to, to give up. I, I couldn't, you know. If we didn't have Amplified Healing, maybe I'd say take that. But, um, as it stands, they just stack so well. Those are your two choices right there. So go with, go with Soul Feast, and then go with Amplified Healing. On 7, another cool thing you can do... Let's go in here and, and launch some W's, and then we're going to pick Arthas up and slam him into the wall. Oh, see, it's a little bit hard to land this, the Q there. If I'd been faster, I could have actually queued him into the wall, and he would have taken... Well, the towers are out of ammo, so he wouldn't take any more tower shots, but it would have been... You know, he'd have been stunned for a whole second. Uh, okay, so, level 7. We're going to go with uh, Endless Death. This increases your soul count, your maximum soul count, by 50%, an extra 50 
uh, from 100 to 50. Now this, once again, we're comboing kind of with the talents here. It's a, it's a talent combo. Now you're going to have the extra. So 150 times 5, you know, is what, 750 plus uh, uh, 0.1. So you have to do, that's 15 health per second more on your regen if you have maximum souls. And of course, since you can go up to 150 with this, you'll actually be able to die, revive in five seconds, and already be halfway to another resurrection. Uh, it won't take you as long to get a second benefit, you know, a second revive from your trait with this. The other ones aren't terrible. Battle momentum is pretty cool because like it reduces the cooldowns of your heroics. It's not terrible. Uh, and Siphon the Dead isn't bad. You actually, you'll activate and you will consume one soul per second to regenerate 3% of your health per second. It's all right, but but I feel like with that, you're taking away from your trait and from the extra health you're getting that it's not ideal. And so that's why we go with Endless Death here. Um, I don't know, that's just like my, my personal pick. And what I see the most, I think. Okay, so level 10, you've got two heroics. We'll go with the, the wonkier one, Apocalypse first. It's the longer cooldown, you can see double the cooldown. Uh, and it used to be used quite a bit. What it does is it creates a rune, a circle underneath a hero. We'll show it off here. This, like that, and then it will stun them. If you, you can walk out of it, of course, but if you stay, if the enemy hero does not move, they're stunned for two full seconds and it deals, you can see 210 damage here. We're at level 11. It's gonna be a little bit less than that. It's gonna be 200, it's 10 per level, so it's 200 at level 10 and then 300 at level 20. Not a lot, it's like, an, you know, a really strong auto attack. Or, you know, like two auto attacks, kind of an auto attack and a half. Um, but the idea is that you could combo this with certain things and you'll get interrupts. Uh, if you're against a Nazebo with a Ravenous Spirit, unless he has a Divine Shield, this is a guaranteed interrupt. You're gonna you're gonna get the interrupt, no doubt, with this. There's nothing he can do unless he has like an Uther to Divine Shield him or a Cleanse. Uh, a Cleanse would do it too, but you know, it's in all other cases, it's a guaranteed interrupt on something like that. You can also wombo it with like a Void Prison, uh, maybe a Gazlo kind of thing. You know, it's like it got the wombo potential with Reign of Vengeance. It's a little bit harder to land though because of that it's more of a skill shot and it's a long cooldown it's a two minute cooldown instead of a minute which really takes it out of any any viability away from this heroic just because the cooldown is so long if it was 60 and lightning breath was 120 well then you would never see diablo played but um you might actually you know have a viable choice of taking apocalypse so that's what apocalypse looks like show it off one more time and this will happen anywhere on the map so even if i don't have vision of arthas it will reveal him and do the same effect anywhere on the map and it'll do it for all five heroes on the enemy team unless of course they're dead uh, so that's one another cool benefit of it but still you know like i said it's not really I don't know, it's really situational if you're doing a wombo combo move maybe um i don't know though how i really feel i prefer lightning breath so let's show that one off reset the level we'll go up to level 10. beginning talents will stay the same and then we're going to go over 13, 16, and 20. So we're going to go, uh, we'll say it, 11 for now. Okay, so Soul Feast, Amplified Healing, Endless Death, Lightning Breath. What this does, a channeled ability for 4 seconds. And you deal, you can see 1,112 damage. It's 1,040 at level 10, you get 72 per level. So it's a big chunk of damage, a huge chunk. And the direction changes based off your mouse cursor. So we'll run out here, it looks like Malfurion took Mule interesting enough and we're just going to activate it and you can see it's it's a channel like this and i can move it like that to follow somebody four seconds okay so another cool thing it is channeled but it cannot be interrupted and that's not on the tooltip uh you know it's really neat don't try and interrupt a diablo <laughs> using lightning breath just run away <laughs> try and avoid him get away from him blink away or something dash because you can't interrupt it and it does at this point, it's doing over 1,100 damage. Now, the range is a little bit short. You have to be in somebody's face. But you can... I've seen this comboed with like a, a Ravenous Spirit. And if they both hit the enemy team at the same time... Well, there is there is no enemy team. They're just obliterated. So, it's pretty cool. This is a lot of fun. And it's only a minute on the cooldown. You can see, I'm down to 40 seconds already. If I had battle momentum, it would be even faster. Um, so along with everything else, it's kind of a cool ability. You can kind of, and he's so tanky to begin with. You can just get into the middle of the enemy team when they're clumped up, or there's one specific person you need to burn down. 
No puns intended. Uh, then you just pop the lightning breath on them. Pretty cool. Uh, and that's that's definitely my my favorite. I recommend giving that one a shot. I mean, APOC, you're going to have to take this one. You're talent gated. It's not a bad choice in that sense, but it's a little harder to use. And it's just such a long cooldown. I don't really recommend it. Let's do a little Diablo dance. <laughs> I've never actually seen that. That's pretty funny. All right, so we've got 1 through 10 covered. Let's go ahead and hit 13 through 20. Two choices on 13. You actually get some choices to go with. Spell Shield and Relentless, the two generic talents here. Don't don't upgrade the Q. Uh, increased range or it adds a slow to the target. Slow is not bad. Maybe if for some reason you don't need these, like if you're against that push comp we talk about all the time, well then maybe I don't know, maybe you could take this. I don't know. I just I always love taking Spell Shield or Relentless, and this depends on the enemy team comp. Against an Arthas, I'm going to take Relentless because of his Howling Blast, because of his, uh, his what's it called, the Tempest, the you know the E. That I can, I can never remember the name of it, but his E, his area of effectability that slows you. Relentless, really good against like this and an Arthas Kerrigan. If you're against like a Nova Zeratul, falls dead. Uh, take Spell Shield. It's going to reduce ability damage. You know, if there's no CC on the enemy team, don't worry about taking Relentless. Take the Spell Shield instead. So your choice here really depends on the enemy team. We'll go with Relentless because there's an Arthas. Uh, but that's determined in-game by the comps. And it's really cool, you know, to have access to both of those. Level 16, another two more choices, uh, depending on, on the comps and how everything works. Now, I would not recommend upgrading the W, just like we don't upgrade the Q, don't upgrade the W. His kit's really wonky. Um, so here, the, the Fire Stomp, the Waves return to Diablo, dealing 150% damage. Here, they will <clears throat> surround you in flames, dealing 63 damage every second for 10 seconds. It's not bad if you need more damage. If your team comp is like four or five tanks uh, I'm sorry did I say four, three or four tanks and you need more damage maybe you, you could take one of these like I see Firestorm quite a bit but in my, my preference like Imposing Presence is really good for team fights it's another generic talent and it reduces attack speeds by 50% against people who rely on auto attacks like Hammer Tychus Vala people like that with really you know their attack speed isn't very important Taking Imposing Presence wrecks them, and they're trying to focus you. If they make that mistake, they're going to suffer tremendously. The other option is Continuous Overpower, and this is cool where you need more, a little more CC to peel for your team. Maybe there's like an Illidan, and he's diving to your backline and wrecking them. Well, you can get two charges of Overpower instead of one, and it'll operate. We'll show it off here. See, I've got the two, and it's a little bit of a uh, cooldown in between uses. So if I come up to Arthas, I'll, I'll knock him back. Pick him up. You can see it's a one second cooldown. Now, unfortunately, he's going to be able to run away. But if he had kept attacking, I could have peeled again with the E. Uh, and so, if I don't need Imposing Presence, I might take this. But Imposing Presence is a 50% reduction in attack speed, and it's really good now. They buffed that uh, about a month, two months ago. And so, uh, I would probably recommend Imposing Presence most of the time and Continuous Overpower if you don't need this. If you're running like double tank comp, or the other team doesn't rely on attack speed. You know, there's not a lot of attack speed related heroes in there that don't benefit from having a fast attack speed, then you might want to go with uh, the continuous overpower instead. Let's refresh these sports. Okay, and then, of course, we get to level 20. And with Resurgence gone, you know, all the tanks now have to actually choose their level 20 talents. It's not just go to Resurgence, which I don't think Diablo had anyways. Um, there's three choices here. Obviously, if you're taking Lightning Breath on 10, you're only you're gonna have these three. Bolt is always a good choice. You can bolt into the enemy team, then use your Q, your W, your E, your R to disrupt. Bolt is a fantastic choice. Storm Shield is if maybe the enemy team has a ton of burst. Your team is melee focused. Say you're ha a double tank with a melee bruiser like a Kerrigan or a Thrall or a Zeratul, and you have to get in close, and the other team's gonna be your teammates are gonna be close to you, and you need to shield them from burst damage. Storm Shield's not bad. That's the 20% max health shield for 3 seconds. And then there's, of course, the heroic upgrade, Hellstorm, where Lightning Breath lasts 50% longer, and it reaches 50% farther. So, you've got three good choices here, depending on the situation. I'm trying to think the most often seen might be Hellstorm or Bolt. I don't think Storm Shield is picked as much, because, you know, he's obviously he's a tank, it's not really his job. But, you know, I would really look at the game and say, what do you need? Do you need a little bit more 
shields? Do you need the HP more? Is your team just getting destroyed too fast before it can really do any damage? Storm Shield's not bad. Does your team need more damage? Take Hellstorm. Do you need a little bit more mobility? Take Bolt to the Storm. And so that's very situational, uh, so depending on the comp. It. Remember, do you need more damage? Do you need more sustain and healing? Or do you need that mobility? If you don't really need one of these two, Bolt's a good one. And if you need Disruption, it's really a way to think of it. Not mobility, but Disruption. Bolt's good because, remember, you've got... Even though the CC on his kit is a little bit weird and a little bit hard to use, you've got, with Continuous Overpower especially, you have three different ways to CC somebody. This world so I can, I can blink into like the back line and then, you know, start disrupting. And I'll have three charges with this, obviously, if I take... You know, if you don't take Imposing Presence, you'd have three. Otherwise, you'd have two. But still, that's like if there's a Nazebo in the back line, you don't need Apocalypse. Nah, who needs Apocalypse when I've got Bolt and I just... I come in here and the Q or the E, either one, will disrupt the Raven Spirit. So, uh, pretty cool. Bolt is like if you need to get in or out with Disruption. The upgrade here is if you need the damage, and that's if you need the shields. So that's going to do it for Diablo, guys. Uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into an actual game, show them off, and uh, you know show off the kit. So just so you know, Soul Feast, Amplified Healing, Endless Death, pretty much your go-tos. Lightning Breath as well. Then you've got the choice at 13, Spell Shield or Relentless. 16, it's most likely Imposing Presence, but if you just need more Disruption and less Sustain, go with Continuous Overpower, and then you've got Bolt of the Storm, uh, Storm Shield or Hellstorm on level 20, depending on if you need more damage, more Sustain, or more Disruption and Mobility. Alright, so thanks for watching guys, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut this and get into a game. We've got Tyrande Tyrand coming up soon, we're going to do a guide on her, another one of the heroes in the Founders Pack. And there's still a few more gameplay videos and some maps I've got left to cover. So uh, lots of cool content coming out to you guys. Thanks, for everybody, for watching. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you want more content. Feel free to like it. Leave comments below if there's something specific you want. This was a request, actually, for the Diablo. You know, so I do take requests all the time. Happy to cover specific uh, things that are troubling you guys. And thank you. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it all. And I'll see you guys on the Nexus.